Hi, I'm Mike Hancock and I'm here with Don Tolman. Hey Don. How, How you doing, doing Maggie? Good. <laughs> We've got Don Tolman's Pearls of Wisdom. And this is going to be a little series of things that you don't often hear from Don. And I'm just going to fire rapid questions at him and let's see where we go with this. Don, the ancient Egyptian culture. I mean, we've got Egyptologists that have studied it for years and years and years. And we've got, uh, you know, everything from Carter going in and discovering Tutankhamun and then getting all the pharaohs out and Ramses II and everything. And everybody's got all this conjecture around Egypt. What was the Egyptian civilization and the scholarships that went on there really about? You know, it's interesting to me because there are records that show exactly what they were about. They had a word to describe the physics of particles. They were theorizing and talking and contemplating and observing the very processes of nature and how this whole thing came about on something that we call the world, the earth, the mother of all living. And they looked at the sun and they knew that it was the father of all living that they are our heavenly, earthly parent, that it helped to give birth to all living things. And as they were looking at what was eventually translated in the 600 BC uh, by Democritus and others as atomos or atoms, yep. there was a particle that was so small and they knew that it could not be divided. And they called it the neater in the Egyptian, the NT. Are. And then through different cultures and eventually making it up into today's English, it's spelled N-E-T-E-R, the neater. It's where the word nitro comes from. Okay. Has that got something to do with uh, the neateroo, the first people? It does. Yep. Okay. And it means spark or life maker. Oh. Okay. So like nitrogen, the gas, they, today they call that gas uh, spark maker, nitrogen, wow. which is the source of all protein, which come of the word proteus, meaning primary or first source. And so you go back to first source or the first group of people on the earth who built the pyramids and all of the theories about how the pyramids were constructed changes up about every 15, 20 years. They don't know. Yep. But as you go back into the records, you find out these people on this earth knew that there was a temple work, a construction that once you had your body, it was not a completed labor. There was an unfinished work. And it was symbolized for thousands of years as a pyramid with a gap between the capstone. Right. That you were to set it into place. That was your purpose on the earth. And the word purpose comes of two words meaning pure position. When you're in a pure position wow. of your life in a given lifetime as you walk upon this planet, they believe that over time and distance you become aware and gain the intelligence and the understanding of how to alchemically cause a transmutation within your body and no longer be mortal. That you could literally learn to live in a body that was immortal. That space and matter are a little bit in opposition to one another because matter wants to enclose space and space doesn't want to be enclosed. And that all of the atoms and all of the subatomic particles of your body are governed by the neater. And as long as you honor the processes of nature and the cosmic eternal process of life, that you could reach a point that you could understand the plants to offer into your body after extended periods of fasting to allow the records of lifetimes to come forth into your awareness and consciousness and you'd know exactly what to do to cause all of the blood to come out through the skin and drop to the ground and the sacrum, meaning sacred, at the bottom of the spine, the column of the temple, would open and the fluids that contain intelligence that is housed there but only opens for those who have done a living temple work, would infuse, go up the spine, into the heavens, into the brain, back down through the body, 
and you would become an immortal being. That your body is your spaceship, it's your vehicle yep. to travel through time and space, body intact, on highways or beams of light. They believed that what we called the sun, and it's why they absolutely honored the sun, was that the neaters exist there. Yep. And it's an eight minute trip on beams of light to this planet to return back into the womb, the cave of creation, to come back and get a body again and try it again and keep going. And that when you die, and the word die means to cast a replicate, if I'm a die maker, I'm making replicated Creation. seed. Yeah, you are. Yeah. And so you're guaranteeing your return. And so if you have aunts and uncles and cousins and brothers and sisters, they are your assurance of your return back as a neater from the sun back into here. That when you die, you've left a replicate seed in someone's body and they will propagate a new house that you can return into. Amenhotep IV yep. was the one. The first pharaoh, as the Egyptian culture began to lose its way in all of this through anger and murder and all kinds of things from different groups, Amenhotep was the first one to stand in front of the people and admit that he was not a pharaoh immortal being and that every man and every woman and every child has equal rights. And that led to an underground movement that eventually came forth in the rebellion against the governments that were trying to control the people, and that was the spirit of liberty. That created the constitution of civil liberties that a lot of countries began to embrace and give rights to the people. When you have your freedom and your rights, and you begin to see this, you can begin to understand that your diet, and the word diet comes of dia in the Latin, means leads to that which is good. And the good, they believed, was light. That the reason you're here on this earth is to get light inside of you, to embrace light. And it would give intelligence and understanding and allow you to walk the path of transmuting or translation, translating into a state of perfect immortality to where you could go to other planets and other star systems and embrace the people on those planets that are more advanced, that they will not necessarily come to you, that you have to rise up to them. That's amazing information, Don, and uh, we're going to be back with some pearls of wisdom a little bit later on. And as you're talking about the concept of the Nita and, and going to light, I always think that, you know, Hollywood always immortalizes something that we think, oh, is that fantasy? But it's actually based on uh, some reality. And the movie, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, Contact with Jodie Foster. And in that movie, she ends up in this, in this machine which basically spins her so fast that she turns into this beam of light and she travels literally for probably a few minutes, which is this, and she ends up on this I alternate... Have not seen that. Yeah, come and watch cool. it. It's a cool movie. She ends up on this alternate world, which is very much, as you could imagine, heaven or the inside of the sun. And she meets her father, 